Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Hello, good evening. Hi, sorry, I was getting my computer fixed there. Um, welcome, welcome. So I'm so excited tonight. We have design number one for the March Easy Dot Art Box. So we're going to get started right away. I've got a lot of beautiful colors here we're going to use tonight. So we've got a nice little spring-themed flower here. So we're going to do a flower mandala tonight. Hey, Randy, good to see you. Um, so we've got a beautiful little flower mandala here that we're going to do. Uh, this is our first template out of the March 2022 box for Easy Dot Art. So I'm so excited to be showing this to you, to, this to you tonight. Sorry, got my tongue tied there. Um, I have got some beautiful colors. We actually have some really bright, springy type colors, but there's a ton of them here. So what I'll do basically is I will just go through and name them off as I use them simply because because I have a whole slew of colors lined up here. I will be using all Deco Art Americana multi-surface satin. So that'll give you an idea of what I'll have there. Oh, awesome. Good to know, Randy. So glad you guys made it halfway to your destination there. Thank you. Um, so I've got my template painted black. So if you've seen me dot before, you'll know that I typically do most of my backgrounds in black. So no particular kind of black, just black paint. It is for me. I use Deco Art Social Art Working Mars Black. Um, you probably will not find that out in the store. So basically just any black will do. Hey Gidget, good to see you tonight. Any black paint will do for the background. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Tonight I am using my Pittsburgh Punch set as my dotting set. So I've got those lined up here and you will probably see me using my nail art tools as well. So I've got these. Um, these are just little ball dotters that are uh, technically they're for nail art. And then I've got a little bit larger one over here and I actually got this tool at the Dollar Tree so they do have this in the craft section so great little dotting tool so I will get started here we're gonna line up here with the center of this and my first color that we're gonna use tonight is cotton ball so it's a uh, deco art um, multi-surface satin white and I really am just using this right in the center dot uh, to get started here with this and basically what I did I've picked out um, ahead of time I picked out the tool that I know would pretty much fit in that spot and I am using that to get started with so we've got our first dot laid out there now the neat thing about these um, templates is they are all lined up for us and centered right in the middle of the template for us is our center point so I don't have to worry about finding center or um, getting my um, design centered on the piece of wood it is all lined up and ready to go for us so I'm just going to go out here to a little bit bigger tool and you'll just see me kind of measuring here to see what tool is going to fit into this space and the big thing with this is you have to consider the footprint of the paint so the size of the tool needs to be just a little bit smaller than the size of the space simply because you want to make sure that your paint fits down in there without crossing over the line so basically what I'm doing here is I am lining up my dots right with the next little design which is a petal so I'm lining up this next set of dots to correspond with the next row, which is a petal design. So there we go. We've got our base, our foundation of our uh, mandala ready to go. That color that I just used was canary yellow, and next will be school bus. 
Now, the school bus I want to put into this larger area. So I'm actually going to pour this one out. The last couple I did not simply because I knew I wasn't going to use a whole lot there in that spot. So I do want to pour these out because I do believe I'm going to do a couple little swooshes here. So I'm going to get one of my homemade DIY swooshing tools here. And I'm just checking size. So basically all these swooshing tools are, it's a pencil with a ball earring in the top of it. So it's one of my favorite tools. I made these tools myself. And we are just going to put a swoosh right on this flower petal here. I'm going to turn my design around so that I can see what I'm doing here. And we're just really filling up that petal with that color. There we go. So that area there that I filled up was this portion of the petal here. Okay, so I'm just filling up as I go around. The great thing about this, oh, hey, Jamie. Oh, hey, hi, Paisley. I'm so glad you're here with your mom tonight. Glad you're getting to watch me. I heard you found my YouTube channel. That's awesome. Um, so we've got the um, petal filled up here. We're going to move on out to the next petal space is a little bit bigger, so I am going to go ahead and put my color out here. My next color is actually Pumpkin Patch. Now, what I'm going to do on this one, it's very similar to what I did on the inside portion there. I don't have a lot of room here, so I am going to uh, work in a couple different areas with this size and then probably switch over to another size tool. Just simply because this pattern has little petals on it and they do get smaller as it goes down. So my goal is always to fit my dots right within that pattern without getting the paint over into the design line. So on these templates, they are awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, that's funny, Jamie. Um, they're designed to where you can use your tools and line your dots right up in here. So the design lines are phenomenal. So these templates come from Diverse Woodworking and I'm so excited that they helped me um, with the manufacturing of these templates. They've really helped me um, bring my dream to reality here of bringing this form of dot art to everybody simply because um, I come up with the design and I send it off to them and they put it onto the wood for me and we come up with these wonderful things that we can create here um, in the Easy Dot Art Club. So I actually do have a subscription box club that online we go in pretty good detail of how to paint these and um, lots of different tips and tips techniques that are taught in the private group um, with these. So if that sounds like something fun, I do have the link to the ordering process there. It's at the top of the comments and you're welcome to check that out. It goes directly to Diverse Woodworking and you can check out the um, subscription box right there on that link. Now I'm filling in this portion of the design and it is basically um, the really flowery part where you start to see some really good petal formation here on these and um... <laughs> oh gosh guys hi so let's see Trudy yep Trudy's, Trudy's in Illinois I know her I've met her and Gidget I've met you at um, Diverse so Gidget's from Missouri Gidget loves um, all the awesome farm animals she does some amazing work um, painting farm animals she has some really cute stuff I love her work, and uh, Trudy, I love watching your stuff too. You ladies are amazing artists, so I'm glad that you're here tonight to join me. Um, so I'm filling in that basic part of that part of the flower, and I'm going to go back in and just add in a little bit of detail here, simply because uh, those dots were a little big for a couple of these areas. I do have one small little area that I just want to put a little, small little baby dot here with my ball daughter at the top of each of these petals. 
because there is just a little spot there where my dots didn't quite line up and I want to fill the space and we have the same thing down at the bottom of the petal I want to fill a little more space there as well I kind of lost where I was we want to fill a little more space there I just want to make sure that I'm getting uh, the space all filled up as much as I can and I do have a spot down at the bottom I'm using uh, the smaller dotting tool on this double tool here there is a small end and a large end and I'm just going to fill in down here at the base of that petal and you can see we've got a really neat flower design going here now so that was our pumpkin patch next color we're going to use is flamingo pink so we're really working our way out here on um, sort of a modified rainbow theme just with some really bright vibrant colors and um, I really am heavy on the flower type look here so I really wanted to uh, oh you're welcome Gidget you're welcome um, I wanted to really bring out the floral colors here and make sure that you could really see the vibrance in this flower so the next one we're doing is flamingo pink and we just have a small little ring of flamingo pink here and it really is just going to require a tiny little um, dotting tool so I have my smallest little Pittsburgh punch um, tool here and I'm going to start at the top of each one of these petals because I think this is going to be just about as big as these dots are going to be on here and it's right at the top of this petal where my swoosh mark comes out is the largest part of that area and it gets smaller after that so we're going to do another little technique called walking the dots and what walking the dots are you'll see that here in a minute and what that actually does it's a really neat um, look so what that is walking the dots let me find what tool I want to use here I'm going to go back to my small ball daughter and basically walking the dots is loading your tool up and not reloading but just letting that paint come off the tool without reloading and what happens when you do that the dots actually get smaller and smaller until you really are reduced down to um, a very small little dot area so it gives a great effect especially on something like this it's a, a petal like this it gives a real lacy effect on there and you can also really create a lot of movement in a piece with these so in particular on this design it has a really nice swoosh effect here to where it's actually if I just left it on this one side of this flower petal it would give it um, some motion almost like a whirly gig or you know one of the summer toys that the kids play with outside um, and then I'm going to come around here and go the other way so that'll give that'll take away my motion effect there but it will fill out my petal here very nicely so I always um, tell my ladies in the dotting group whenever I'm doing walking of the dots I almost have to be real quiet or hold my breath because I have this thing where I do count the dots and it's not that I necessarily worry about how many are on there it just uh, helps my concentration to where I can really get them spaced out um, nicely in the way I want them. Um, so you may hear me just stop talking when I'm doing that. Just simply because I want those dots to be really nice and spaced out and it helps to... Um... Oh, Gidget, I know. Yes, I'm so excited to be showing this at the retreat. Sorry, I interrupted my, my thing. I saw your, your comment there. It helps me to really get that spacing done. Now, I'm going to go down to a very, very small little ball daughter. I have a really small little baby one here. And I've just got a couple little areas here I want to fill in where I didn't want to force that size to go in there. I really want to make sure. My motto is if I don't have enough room to... Put a dot then I don't push it in there because I don't like the dots to touch I want them to be all separate so I want to make sure that um, I'm leaving ample room for those and not pushing it because I, I just like the way that it looks better 
when I actually just leave a little breathing room. Okay. Ooh, that's looking so fun. All right, now we're going to move on up to our next pink color, Pink Tropics. And we're going to have some really nice sized dots with this. This is actually um, really going to give us a punch of color here for this one. Okay, so we are going to move up in size, and I may just use the same size that I used here. And I think that'll do really well for us. So when I'm going through and I am picking the size tool that I want, I basically am just fitting down in there and seeing what's going to fit in the space while I'm still allowing for the footprint of the paint to spread out there in the design. I want to make sure that the paint is not going to overtake that uh, design line laser cut. I really want to allow that room there. So a lot of that is just figuring out over time what fits where and how um, the paint's going to respond on the tool. And you do probably notice I leave my tools up here that I've used. Then that way I know um, what size I have. And I also have them color-coded here. And that helps me to... Um, kind of line up what I'm going to do. So for instance, I have the green one here and I know the blue one is the next smaller one. So I just know that um, as I go through here, I want to have a smaller one next because it is a little smaller on that design. And I'm just going to go in and fill in to the right side of that initial dot. And I just have a thing where I kind of like to go to one side and then I'll turn back around and go the other way. It just helps me keep things lined up really well. Sometimes I use a Lazy Susan um, and that will help as far as movement on the piece. But I tell you what, on these templates here, these are six by six. Um, so I really find it just as easy to just turn them as I'm going and working um, through the design here. Okay, now we're going to move down probably a couple sizes here. Yep, a couple sizes down. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going down in size a little bit here. Can you guys see that okay? I want to make sure that I'm staying in the the frame there for you guys to really see what I'm doing here. So this design, it does get a little narrow there and we end up getting down there to where we have just a little peak at the end where I'll use a smaller dotting tool and fill in that little peak area there to finish off our petals. This is such a fun um, early spring summer design. And really, honestly, you can do any colors you want on this. You do not have to do the colors that I picked. Um, I just wanted something to look really bright and seasonal. Okay, next I'm going to uh, work on that smaller Cool. So I think I'm going to go down to my ball dotter. This is the large end of that ball dotting tool. And I want to make sure that I can fit that in there. So this is just at the, the little valley of the petal here. And I'm just going to fill that space in. And finish this row off. So this is a really simple beginner's design. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of extra detail. Now, I will be back again on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock uh, on my channel, and I will be uh, sharing the same design, but I'll do it in a little bit 
uh, more detailed way. So if you like this design and want to see what other things we can do with it, um, please be sure to come back on Wednesday at 8 o'clock and I'll show you another way to do this design. It's going to be a little bit more uh, detailed, a little bit more challenging. Okay, now I want to basically just fill in here. Oh, I'm debating on what size to use. So I'm just looking for a small little ball tool. So this next color is Iris, which is a lighter purple. And I just have a little triangle spot here that I want to fill in with just little, um, what I call micro dots. And they are really little. So I've got uh, just a little triangle design here coming off the edge of each of these petals. And we're just going to fill that in with these little baby micro dots. And it's just enough to give that portion of the design um, a little bit of notice here so we can see it. But, I mean, it's not like it's sticking out saying, here I am, but just enough so we can see it. And uh, so we can see that the little design. So this is a six-petal mandala. Um, I mostly do six- and eight-petal mandalas. So I typically do not do four. I don't like the way the four petal mandalas look. Um, I, I like the design options I get with six and eight. So that's mostly what you'll see me um, doing. Once you get beyond eight, uh, the design would get very small and intricate. Uh, it wouldn't be very um, user friendly for, especially for people beginning daughters. Um, now, somebody who's been dotting a while, that might be uh, a lot of fun and a great option to use, but when people are just getting going with dotting, these six and eight sided mandalas are a lot of fun because they can uh, easily work with them and not get frustrated. Now, uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to go back to that larger size one we used in the middle, and then we're going to fill out this larger uh, petal that I have here and it is just like a it almost looks like a leaf but I am treating it as a petal because I have a different thought for what's going to happen in the background um, that would be like a leaf type situation okay Okay, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And I'm just going down a size here on my tool. And what I'm going to do here is give it two dots and let it get a little smaller. And I'm just filling in this petal. And remember, I said that this is a beginner design here. This is something that really no one who has ever dotted before, or someone who has never dotted before, can um, easily learn how to do this type of design. It's perfect for um, somebody who's never picked up a dotting tool at all. Um, now when I come back on Wednesday and revisit this design, we'll do something a little more intricate. Okay, now we will... We're just going to walk out here a little bit with a smaller and we're just taking those uh, dots out farther on the petal and just completing that petal here all right now I've got some space here on the side of this line of dots. 
So I'm going to take that space and just, I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see this. Um, I'm going to take that space and fill it in here with some more dots. So I'm just going to come out from each one of these and just fill out kind of in an upward type motion. Just to give it that idea of the petal coming away from the flower. And it's just going to give a little more motion to that petal. And just add a little bit more of a layer of detail on there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and go back in with the ball daughter and we will get... Do I add any medium to my paint? Um, actually, Trudy, no. Sometimes you do need to on some paints, but my paint of choice tends to be Deco Art Americana Multi Surface Satin or just plain Deco Art Americana. And typically, I never have to add anything to that. Now, there are other paints that, yes, absolutely, if you use a thicker, heavier bodied paint, you will need to use like a flow medium to thin it out. You don't want your paints to be too thick. You, um, it, It's difficult to get really nice dots with paint that's too thick. So um, I tend to use, my paint of choice is the DecoArt Americana or the Multi-Surface Satin, just simply because I, I like the ease of use. I typically can use it directly out of the bottle and not have to worry about um, too thick, too thin, anything like that. Now, I will tell you some of your more entry-level paints, um, you do have a problem with being a little thin, um, like your apple barrels and things like that. Um, they they tend to be a little thin. Um, so that's why I, you know, if I'm doing something for me, I definitely want to be using, um, deco art because, oh, I forgot an area there. I, I just get better results with that. And I'm always happier with the way my project looks and happier with the way that the, um, paint lays down on my project. So I guess that's the long-winded answer to that. But I typically don't have to, don't have to add anything to the DecoArt um, Americana or multi-surface satin. Oh, you're welcome, Trudy. One more set of dots to your left. Yes, Kim, thank you. I got it. <laughs> when I came back around, I saw it. Did I miss another set? Or was that the set I caught? Okay, I see it. All right, thank you, Kim. Okay, now, now that I'm looking at this, I think I'm going to go back in and see if I have just enough spot to put a purple right there in my little micro dot petal just to add a little bit more detail there. That is the neat thing about these uh, design line templates. The great thing is Traditionally, when I was doing a mandala, when I do one on a canvas, um, you definitely, it's easier to work from the inside out. It's hard to leave a space and go back and do part of the design. With the design lines, it's absolutely amazing because um, traditionally you do not have to do that. If I wanted to leave something blank and come back in and rework it, um, the design line allows me to do that because I can really keep track of what's going on with my design just simply by um, the lines being there for me. Okay, next color I'm using is the Purple Sunset. And we're going to finish off these petals with the Purple Sunset. Okay, now, um, let's see, I'm just looking at just some design choices here, what I want to do. And I think I am going to go back in and do just a little bit of swoosh technique here. I'm looking at my tools and I want, I believe, just a little bit smaller 
swoosh tool. Now remember I said these swoosh tools are my DIY tools that I have. So I'm just going to go in here with this purple sunset. I love this color. It's really vibrant. And we're going to add a base to this next outer portion of the petal. And it's really going to help define that outer area of each of these petals. And it's going to give it a little bit of movement there, which I love. And I tell you, this uh, purple sunset is probably one of my new favorite colors. Um, it's really vibrant. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. You probably cannot, but it's gorgeous. Okay. Now, what to do, what to do. So, I think what we'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and do a large dot up here at the top and then we're going to do some dot walking here. I want to frame the top of this petal here with a dot and then I really want to um, showcase some walk dots going down the inside of this petal so we can really see the shape of it and showcase the shape of the actual petal itself. And I think that'll help us really build a real pretty foundation for the rest of the petal. Now, I'm gonna get my largest, uh, I may not even start with a ball dotting tool. I'm probably gonna start with, yeah, a little bit smaller of the Pittsburgh Punch Set. I want to go down and size a couple here. So what I'm doing here is I'm dipping in the paint once and then going two dots there. Not re-dipping, so I'm, it's walking the dots, but it's just with a bigger tool. And it's, it's just a basic fundamental that you offload paint and then the next one gets smaller. So you can do that with a ball dotting tool. You can do it with a flat dotting tool. Um, it works both ways and it gives the same effect. So if you load it pretty good on that first one, the second one will be um, less paint and will be smaller. So walking the dots is one of those fun uh, techniques that once you master that, um, you can make so many neat designs with that. And that was actually one of the first things that uh, drew me to dot mandalas was the pieces that had a, a lot of the small, tiny little walk dots. I just thought they were beautiful. I thought, for me, they looked like lace. So I loved that effect um, when I first was learning about uh, dot mandalas. Now I know you guys cannot see how vibrant this is, but it is gorgeous. When I'm done, I'll take some good pictures for you guys so you can see. Okay, now we're going to uh, walk down just a couple more sizes and then we'll do a ball tool. Now I won't even need to do a ball tool. So basically I'm just walking down with my uh, Pittsburgh punch set tools and just using smaller and smaller and just allowing that design to decrease as I go down. Okay, back around the other side here. And I'm really watching to what I call hug the dot up to the previous dot and I'm also uh, hugging it up to that design line which for me means getting it as close as possible without touching. That's what I call hugging it up. And it just allows those dots to be spaced out really nicely. Okay and then I'll do Probably one more small little dot here, maybe even with the small end. That one was kind of big. So 
So I'll come back in and just do hit this last dot on both sides here, and I am redipping on each one and just catching. Oops, I missed one. Let me come back in and get that. And then come back in with my ball tool. That's one of the other reasons I like to leave my my tools out where I can see what I used. And that way if I forgot something, it's easy to go back and fix whatever I forgot. It's a lot different though when you're uh, when you are sitting quietly to yourself and working on a piece than um, when you're um, doing a live because it's a little more distracting. When you're by yourself, you can really concentrate on what you're doing and um, make sure that you get that design the way you want it. Okay, so I have a little spot right at the top of each one of these, so I am going to go back in and just put a smaller dot in here. Now, I really love the way the swoosh looks down here. I think I'm going to go ahead and add one in here along the uh, outer aspect of that limb, or the petal, sorry. And I'm going back in with the same size swoosh tool that I did before. And I basically am just following, following along that petal there and swooshing down to where it's larger at the top and it's decreasing in size. And then we'll swing back around the other way here. I have, um, I call it a, a swooshing def, def uh, what do I want to say, a defect when I come back this other way. They're, I'm, they're not as good when I come back. <laughs> when I pull them towards me as when I go away from myself. Swooshing deficit. Okay. There we go. So that's really giving it some really neat... Uh, definition and movement there. Now I will go back in again and I just want to do some uh, walk dots along the edge but I don't want them really big. I do want to be a little more dainty on these. I don't want the big dots like I had. So I'm going down four with this one and you can really see they're getting small. So you can see that effect of offloading that paint and what that does for the dots as you go smaller and smaller. This flower almost looks like a uh, clematis, the really bright purple clematis that you see um, vining up on mailboxes and porches and things like that. Really has that look and feel to it on the shape and and now with that bright vibrant purple color. And then I'm just going to take my small ball daughter here 
just go down a little bit on there. Does anybody have any questions? Anything that um, I can help you out with on these? So remember, these are, uh, this is the design number one for the March Easy Dot Art Box. And the link is at the top of comments if you'd like to go in and check that out and see um, how to go about ordering that. So with the Easy Dot Art Box, you'll get three new designs every month. And there is a private group that I go in and I teach step by step. All the tips and tricks and techniques of how to um, create these beautiful pieces of art. And, you know, the neat thing is you get one-on-one uh, -on -one practically with that group. Um, and then you have a lot of other people that are in the group that um, can help and comment. And um, it's really a great learning atmosphere. Okay, so there is our wonderful little... Our wonderful um, flower. Now we're going to have some fun with the green. Oh, Kim, I know. It's so pretty, isn't it? I think it's just going to be really fun for the group. Okay, so I'm going to go in. And this, this area on the outer edge is going to be what I consider the um, leaf area. So I've got turf green and then I've also got apple green. So we're going to use a combo of those two colors and really bring out whoo, the um, that edge leaf area. I have my paints exploding here. Okay, so that one was apple green. And I've got apple green everywhere. Hold on here, guys. I know this template is um, a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to work on some really fantastic swooshes here for this area. I'm debating on a pretty large tool here. So this is one of my DIY swoosh tools. So like I said earlier, it's a pencil with a ball earring in it. And a lot of times though, the one thing I find out, the larger the swoosh, the more daring it is because you gotta drag that baby out. And uh, it's not as easy on the larger ones as it is on the small ones for me anyways. And uh, Swooshing is definitely something that takes some practice. I try not to do them too much on beginner pieces because it can be frustrating. And I don't want people to get frustrated when they're first starting. Now, the very first swoosh that I laid down there, I don't like it. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove something you don't like. So basically, um, two tips are your friend. So you can go in and just roll right up that swoosh while it's still wet. We can get that off of there. If we need a little water, you can put water on your Q-tip and just roll across there. Worst comes to worst, once we get that off of there, we can put black paint right over that. So it is easy, fairly easy to fix something you don't like. Now. Um, I'll be able to go back in and fix that here fairly quickly. It'll dry. And I'll get a little rescue paint on here. I'll show you guys what rescue paint is. For me, in this art form, rescue paint is black. And it just rescues that area. So that shows you how easy it is with these templates just to go in and fix something that didn't quite work. I didn't like the way that swoosh was, so we're going to fix it. I'll let that dry a second, and we'll go back in, and we'll fix that once it dries.
Oh, Laura. Okay, that's a great question. So I do have some Americana color charts that I can share with you. Um, some of the satins and uh, matte finishes do compare very similarly. Um, I have a color chart for the satins and a color chart for the matte that I can forward to you um, if you are needing that. And it gives a really pretty good comparison. Now, it doesn't actually state on there, this color matches this. But you'll be able to match up pretty quickly um, what comes fairly close to whatever color it is that you're wanting. So I do have those. I can forward those to you if you would like for me to. Or I can put them in the comments here after we're done. Um, I'll try to remember to put those in the comments so you can have those. And they really, they came right off of the, um, the Deco Art website. I just actually found those the other day because someone else was asking about that sort of um, comparison resource. So I just am going down a size here on my tool. So it was a, a great find on that resource, Laura, because, yeah, it is nice to have um, that where you can go back and reference those colors. They have so many fantastic colors. And um, I do have... Um, a lot of designs where I use the satins, so um, I just like the way they look, and so I do use a lot of those, but I know a lot of people don't have the satins, um, so yeah, it's nice to have that um, reference chart. So I will put that in there for you in the comments. Okay, now I think my place where I used my rescue paint, I think it's dry. So we'll go back in and oh, much better. So there I just went right back over and uh, fixed that. Oh, you're welcome, Laura. You're welcome, honey. I'll get it uh, loaded for you. Okay, now I'm just going to alternate and um, go down uh, the way here with the same size tool and just the other color. And I'm just kind of filling in this space here. And just giving the look of leaves coming out here, out from behind the back of the flower. Okay, now I feel like I've got a little um, space down at the bottom there, and I do want to, I think, just fit a little apple green down in here, just to kind of anchor my, my swooshes there. And it just gives them a little bit of something to anchor in and kind of evens up those uh, ends a little bit. All right. Okay, so there you have it. That is just a real basic dot mandala design. Um, I wanted to show you guys something that you could do as a beginner that um, you can accomplish with these templates. So this is template number one for the March Easy Dot Art Box. 
and it gives you just a great idea of what you can do um, with these. Now, come back on Wednesday. If you're available Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, I'll be back live again, and I'll show you another version of this same template, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys then. The information for ordering the Easy Dot Art Box is at the top of the comments. You'll see that there. And I really appreciate everybody stopping by tonight. And Laura, I'll download that reference for you here um, as soon as we're done. I hope you guys have a great night. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Bye-bye.